baby! Woo! I'm answering a viewer question, an angler named Kip down in Sacramento County. He reached out to me and he asked me, Kel, what are your favorite fishing knots? And uh, I'm glad he asked because I'm going to demonstrate them. I've been wanting to do this video for a while and uh, when Kip asked me that question, it kind of kind of drove me over the edge. So what I've got here, I've got some uh, P-Line CXX 25 pound test. I think you're going to be able to see that pretty good. And I have three seven knot hooks because they're nice and large you can see what i'm doing i'm going to demonstrate three knots three very basic knots that everybody should know knot number one i got a scissors here too for cutting stuff off i'm going to be crowding the camera here so you can see what i'm doing knot number one this is one of the strongest simplest knots you can tie it's called the palomar if you don't know this one you should know this one tie a palomar knot you need to get your line through the eye of whatever you're tying on be it a hook like this seven knot a lure a snap whatever you're tying on you need to get the line through there double so this is a fairly stiff line so i'm going through this way once i'll pull some line out and then i'm going to go back through there whoa there we go got it through there so what i got here i got my line doubled up through the eye of that hook here's the the loop double end Got it on there like that. From here out, that's the hardest part of the whole knot. So just take your line, tie an overhand knot. You know, the beginning of the old granny knot. Just shove it right through there like that. Now you're right there. See this loop? You're going to take whatever it is you're tying on that line and drop it through, through that loop. I left it a little short, but I'll get it through there, right there like that. There you go. Now slide, get everything up above the eye of that hook and start to draw it down and don't go crazy. Work it down. See, I'm, I'm working it. I'm working it. I'm making that part smaller there, right there. This part's getting smaller every time. I'm kind of working it down. Start it down. Now you don't just want to wrench it down because that's going to cause friction. It's going to mess up your line. Probably cost you big old fish. Big fish, as a, as a, as a typical rule, they only strike when you mess something up so they can get away and laugh at you with their fishy friends. So, don't just draw it down, put a little spin on there, then draw it down, start, get it tight, see a little loop still in there, pull that down, then independently, I pull this side, and I pull this side, and then I'm done. And I don't cut this tag end super short. I don't see any benefit to that. I'm gonna leave it about an A sixteenth of an inch, something like that, right there. That's not number one. That's a 90% knot. Whatever your, uh, your breaking test your line is, in this case, 25 pound, I'm gonna get about 90-ish, 90, 90 95%, but certainly above 90% of the strength of that line in that knot. So that's not number one. That's your Pelmar. Very easy, very reliable, and we are very done with it. Now, this next knot, grab another hook, this next knot is not nearly as strong, but it's very easy to tie. I'll bet you I've, gosh, I don't even want to know. I bet I've tied up 100,000 of these, or maybe 50,000 at least. It's the improved clinch knot. Pretty much do this one in my sleep. Here we go. There is one thing that I do that makes the knot a little more reliable. This is about a 75% of the line weight knot. So you can't go crazy. It's not the knot to tie if you're fishing for tuna or whatever. So and there are a lot more complicated knots, San Diego knot and stuff like that. I don't do that. 90% of the time, Palomar gets it done. So take your hook, improve clinch knot. Just shove your line through the eye like that. Pull some line through. It's like this. You know, I like to leave a little extra. I like to have something to work with. Take your finger of your, you know, your weak hand, in my case the left hand, put that there, and you're going to wrap this anywhere from five to eight times. So I'm going to go once, twice, three, four, five, six times, seven times, right there. Seven wraps, the hook's over here, seven wraps. See this hole right here, right there? There's a hole right there. 
above my index finger where we started the wraps. Take this end, the end that just cut off, shove it through there. That forms a loop over here. This is the improved part. Grab that tip, pull it through there. Now what I like to do is I grab that tip with my teeth like this, see? Then I start it down and I wet it. Double it over, just like that. Draw it down, pull it again. Probably break your tooth, don't do that. But anyway, there you go. Now, I don't trim that super short. Why these knots fail? One, they can cut themselves if you're pulling really hard on them, but they like to slip. They like to slip out. So as a result, Man, I'm going to leave that thing about a quarter inch, maybe a little longer right there. I'm going to leave a little tag end on it. That's my insurance against the slip. But if I'm out there, heat of battle, I need to tie a knot quick and dirty. That's it. Impro improved clinch knot. Very simple. That's knot number two. Now this final knot, it's more complicated. It's one you need to know whether you're a kokanee guy, striper guy, lingcod guy. doesn't matter. You need to know how to snell a hook. So you, in this case, don't want it hooked on a spool. Get yourself a section of line. However long you anticipate your leader being, give yourself a little extra and cut it off, all right? So in this case, I don't know, I've probably got 40 inches of line there. Doesn't matter which end you use, take your hook. Get your hook like this. We can, in my case, left hand, I'm holding it right behind the barb, it's like that. Just like that. I'm gonna take this line, I'm gonna pass it through the eye this way. Just like that. And I'm gonna leave, you know, about so much. I got a couple three inches through there. I want that in my hand. I don't want that to get away from me. That's bad. That gets away from me, bad. I wanna control that, like that. So I get the hook, I've got that line there. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make however many wraps I wanna make. At least five, maybe seven, maybe 10, maybe eight. This is called a bumper uh, snell knot or an egg loop knot. A lot of guys call it that. I, I started tying this. Barry Canavero, um, fish hooker sport fishing, taught me this knot years ago for rigging shad for delta striper fishing, but I've seen the same knot used by steelhead guys. It's an egg loop. So take your line, start wrapping. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 wraps in this case. However many you want. Okay, right there. Now, we're gonna take the end of that line we were wrapping with, we're gonna find the end of it, we're gonna pass it out through the eye. Now here's the hardest part of this whole knot. Pass that out through there, and I like to get it out there only about two inches. That's it. Now you see, my index finger is holding that where I was wrapping. It got to hold that. But I want this part of this line that I passed through there, I want it between my thumb and my index finger. So you got to keep your index finger on that line. I'm pushing on it. My finger's turning white. If I held this a long time, my finger would probably fall off. But th that would be bad. I couldn't scratch my nose. So hold it tight and uh, get a hold of the eye. You can release your thumb for a second and get that line back in there, just like that. I don't know if you can see that. I'm trying to hold it up at different angles. I got that line back in there. Then continue wrapping over it with the same piece of line again. And I'm gonna do another five or six wraps. Like that. I don't really know how many that is, but I'm gonna stop right there. Now, we're done. What you're gonna do to draw this knot down is just start pulling this end. Nice and gentle, pull it through. And you can see this kind of twizzling around here. You got to kind of kind of work this because it's going to want to tangle up down there. It's going to ball up. But you'll see it. it's disappearing into the knot just like that. There we go. Now, give it a little tug. Bear down on it a little bit. I like to leave my tag end um, pretty much as long as the shank of the hook. So I'll take it back here somewhere like that. I'll leave a little tag there. Got a beautiful snell on that hook, and you've got a loop here which you can, you know, you can stick bait under. If you're fishing row or something like that for maybe sturgeon or steelhead, of course you could use this with a much smaller hook. You can put that under there, you can put a shad's tail under there, and you can draw that down and hold whatever you want above that hook. So that's all fun and games. Um, this is the same knot I use when I'm tying kokanee leaders, when I'm using those tiny little red octopus hooks. Of course, I 
I wear glasses when I'm working with that tiny stuff. But that is it. That is the bumper snail knot. That's not number three. Number one, the Palomar. Number two, the improved uh, clinch knot. And number three, the bumper snail. If you could tie those three knots, you're good for 99% of the situations you're going to encounter fishing Northern California saltwater or freshwater. And uh, practice those, learn those, use those, and uh, you're going to set yourself up for success. Anyway, I hope that helps some guys out that are trying to learn to tie knots. Those are the three that I primarily use. I've caught a lot of fish. They're pretty simple. You don't need to be overly complicated. If you mess up a knot when you tie it, start all over again. A bad knot is just pure poison. Um, always check your line for abrasions. Make sure your knots are perfect. Attention to detail puts big fish in the boat. I'm Kel Kellogg. I'll catch you here next time. I'm signing off.